All right, where am I heading to now? Stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. Hey everybody, welcome to part two of my week away from New Orleans, where I fly from Denver, Colorado and go to Portland, Oregon. And I'm there for a few days, so I'm ready to take you along with me. So let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to Multnomah Falls. Let's go and see what it's all about. In a state where water regularly flows down from upon high, Multnomah Falls, all 620 feet, stands above the rest as Oregon's tallest waterfall. Located 30 miles east of downtown Portland, along the historic Columbia River Highway, the two-drop cascade attracts visitors of all types and ages. Fed by rainwater and snowmelt, the fall's steady stream runs year-round, making it a year-round attraction. The highest volume comes in the winter and in the spring, and the waterfall sometimes freezes partially at the height of winter. Multnomah Falls is the most visited natural recreation site in the Pacific Northwest, with more than two million stopping by each year to take in the views. The Multnomah Falls Lodge, restaurant, gift shop, snack bar, and restrooms are open to the public. Timed reservation tickets required May through September only. So the neatest part about this is the trail. You can walk up to certain vantage points, of course. But there is a walking trail that goes all the way up to the top. And I'm not doing that today, but you'll get the idea. So the trail goes, starts there, goes up and around, and you see people walking up there across the bridge it goes all the way up top around that big rock and over
So the gift shop is really nice. Got lots of little items, postcards, cups, mugs. Noma, Oregon, Sasquatch. <laughs> so I want to pause just for a minute and remind you to um, hit those thumbs up and subscribe. It helps my channel to grow and um, I just really appreciate that if you could do that for me and uh, make a comment below if you've ever been on the Columbia River or maybe seen the Multnomah Falls. It's a beautiful, beautiful area and I hope you enjoy this video. All right, let's continue. The Bonneville Lock and Dam, built and operated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, was the first federal lock and dam on the Columbia and Snake Rivers. Construction began in 1933 and the lock and dam was dedicated by President Franklin D. Roosevelt on September 28, 1937. Total construction cost was $88.4 million. As energy needs to the Northwest grew, additional hydropower facilities were built upstream. It takes more than 150 people to operate and maintain the Bonneville Lock and Dam each year. The workforce includes engineers, powerhouse and lock operators, office administrators, skilled laborers, warehouse workers, biologists, and park rangers. Bonneville Dam in 1940. As we drove out, we had to stop because they had to open the gates and lock for a boat to go through. So we waited for a few minutes and sure enough, there it is going through the locks. You can barely see the uh, top of the boat right there. to capture the boat. That's the top of it.
Bonneville Fish Hatchery. information and gift shop here. Of course on the Columbia River we have sturgeon. So we're going to go see the fishes and then we're going to see the sturgeon. I guess you know where you're going because there's fish on the ground pointing their way. <laughs> The white sturgeon in this pond come from the Columbia River. They are a freshwater scavenger fish feeding off the bottom of the rivers they inhabit. Their appearance and function has undergone little change in the million of years they've been in existence. You see them swimming here much as their ancestors did in the dim past. The head and body are covered with rows of bony plates rather than scales as in modern fish. Sturgeon grow slow but attain enormous size. They first spawn around 15 years of age, eventually reaching upwards to 18 feet and 1,200 pounds in weight. They have been known to live 100 years. So they show up a little bit different from the top. Now we're going to go to the Sturgeon Viewing and Interpretive Center. Turn this around.
There's Herman. He's one big fish. He's over 10 feet long. He weighs over 500 pounds. And Herman is over 80 years old. So I kind of grew up in Oregon, and whenever I came to Portland, uh, well, actually I lived in Portland area for a couple years, but the, the Bonneville Dam and the fish hatchery, especially during the summer, was always something that was a lot of fun. And uh, we had picnics here, and it was kind of a refreshing place to go in the heat of the summer. So of course, you know I'm gonna suggest if you're gonna come up to Portland, you gotta visit the Bonneville Dam area, fish hatchery, go to the Multnomah Falls, go on the historic highway. So a lot of history here. Columbia River and we're starting to get a little nippy but we're at the brewery I thought I'd come out here on the porch and just take some a little bit of a video this is the bridge of the gods it crosses the Columbia so we have Oregon on the left and we have Washington State on the right Well, hello from Gresham, Oregon. So today we are going down to the Wooden Shoe and Tulip Farms and um, maybe taste some wine. So I'm gonna be taking you along with me, like I always do. Let's go have some fun.
Well, thanks everybody for watching. I really do appreciate your attention and following all the way through to the end of this video. And I hope you um, hit those like buttons and subscribe and um, look forward to producing one a week for you. I do have uh, some cruises coming up. I have some exciting adventures to share with you. So um, just keep watching and keep subscribing and keep sharing. And in the meantime, I will see you on the next one because Joe Knows Adventure, New Orleans, in, around, and beyond. I'll see you on the next one.